Hey all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how we can use Lambda functions and the AWS SDK to dynamically update DNS records on a Route 53 hosted zone. Let's get into it. So before jumping into the actual code portion of this tutorial, let's talk about why this would be helpful. There's often times when working with services like EC2 or ECS and AWS where you want to have a static IP address for users to connect to. This might be for a game server, a media server, web server, whatever it might be. There needs to be a fixed point that users can connect to that doesn't change. Static IPs is the immediate solution to this, which you could use something like Elastic IPs from AWS to do. The issue with Elastic IPs is that over time, especially if you have multiple of them, they can quite quickly add up in cost um, as you get billed for when they're not being used. So if you're only using the server, say one hour per day, two hours per day, you're being charged for the other 22 hours of when they're not being consumed. So this can quickly scale in cost. So what's another solution? Another solution might be using a Route 53 hosted zone and a domain name with an A record pointed to the IP address of your ECS or EC2 instance, and then users can connect to that using the domain name that you give them. The issue with this, of course, is that every time the ECS or EC2 instance restarts, it'll be provisioned a new dynamic IP address, which you then manually need to go in and update the Route 53 hosted zone A record to point to that new hosted zone. So if this is restarting, say, three times a day, that's three times you manually have to go in, update the A record, wait for that to propagate, and then users can connect through the domain name still. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in today's video. We're gonna be looking at how we can use a Lambda function to dynamically change an A record on a Route 53 hosted zone to change the IP address to a new value. So with the why covered, let's jump into the actual tutorial portion of this video and get coding. Before following along this tutorial, we need a CDK stack, so you can use an existing one or you can create a new one to follow along. So once you have your CDK stack set up and ready to go, let's configure the prerequisite for this tutorial, which is the region we're deploying to. In this case, we need to be deploying to US East 1, which is because we're configuring a Route 53 hosted zone and it being a global resource, it has to be hosted and controlled from the US East 1 region. So if you're not already deploying to the US East 1 as your default region, we need to configure it in our stack definition inside the bin directory. So let's do that now. To do that, you want to go into, like I said, the stack definition file inside the bin directory, and then do env here, region, and then we're going to pass in US East 1. This will ensure that we deploy to US East 1 instead of any other region, and all of our services and infrastructure is created within that region, so we can easily can control Route 53. I'll also quickly mention that while in theory it's possible to deploy the Route 53 portion of this stack to one stack in the US East 1 region, and then the other infrastructure like the Lambda functions to another region that's closer to yourself, this kind of multi-stack setup is gonna be out of the scope of this video and would require some extra functionality like SSM to pass ARNs between them. So we're not gonna be covering that for simplicity's sake, but I just wanted to make you aware that is something you could look into implementing, especially if you had quite a large stack, not just one Lambda function like we're gonna to have today. So with our region now configured, let's jump into actually defining our resources and services for this tutorial. The first one will be the Route 53 hosted zone. So to get started with your Route 53 hosted zone, we need to define the domain that we want to deploy to. In this case, I'm just going to be doing an example, which is going to be yourdomain.com. For the purposes of this tutorial, you can use any domain name. It doesn't need to be one that you own, but obviously in practice, you would probably use one that you actually own and can point the name servers to. But for this tutorial, I'm just using yourdomain.com. After you've defined your domain name, we're then going to define our hosted zone. So we're going to do const domain name hosted zone equals new hosted zone import from root 53. Then going to pass this in, going to pass in our ID of just the main hosted zone. And then we're going to pass in an option to it, which is the name. And we're just going to name that our domain. With that, that's our domain hosted zone configured. The next thing we'll want to do is define a base A record on that, which we will later update using our Lambda function. But for now, we just need to create the base A record with a default value so we have an A record present to update. So to do that, we're going to do const A record equals new A record. Again, import that from root 53, pass in the reference to the stack, and then we'll pass in an ID of A record. We're then going to pass in some options to a record and that's going to be a target with a values and then the values is just going to be our default ip address that we're later going to update so for now i'm going to do 192.168.1.1 just a standard local ip address then we're going to pass in our record name which we're just going to call the same as our domain 
And then finally, we're gonna do the zone, which is gonna be deployed to, which is the domain hosted zone we just defined. So to recap, we've defined our domain, our domain hosted zone in Route 53, and then we've made a new A record with a default value of 192.168.1.1 on our hosted zone that we just created. The last thing that we want to do is we wanna create a dependency between our A record and the hosted zone so that whenever we remove the stack, the A record would get re removed first before the hosted zone does. So to do that, we're just gonna do a record.node.addependency domain hosted zone, just like that. And that concludes the Route 53 portion of this tutorial. We've created a domain, a domain hosted zone, an A record on that hosted zone, and then created a dependency between them. So we're now gonna move on to creating our Lambda function and the a using the AWS DK to update the A record that we created. So the first thing that we need to do is define a new IAM permission for the Lambda function to use to have the necessary permissions to change the record on the domain hosted zone. So to create our new IAM function, we're going to do const root 53 permission equals new policy statement, like so. I'm gonna open that up, pass in some options to it. We're gonna do actions, and then we're gonna do open an array and we're going to do root 53 change resort record sets and then we'll do list record sets and then finally we'll do list records sets command. The reason we need the list resource permissions is because in our lambda function we're going to log out the starting values and the final values of the records so to do that we need to use the list resource command so that's why we've included that permission here but if you weren't doing that you could just use the change resort record set permissions. So after we define the actions that we're going to use, we now need to define the resource that that applies to. So we're gonna do resources as an array and we're gonna pass in the ARN of our hosted zone. So then this allows it to apply to our hosted zone ID that we created earlier. And with that, we've defined the permissions that we need on our Lambda function to update the records in Route 53. So now let's move on to defining our Lambda function in the stack before finally writing the Lambda function. So to define our Lambda function, we're gonna do const update record Lambda equals new node.js function. Pass in this with an update record lambda as the ID. Then we're gonna pass in some options to it. So we're gonna do memory size equals 1024. Runtime is gonna be runtime.node.js 16. And then gonna do handler and point that to handler. We're then gonna do the entry point, which is gonna be entry, and then we're gonna point that to resources update record.ts. We'll create this file in a moment when we write our Lambda function. So the final thing we need to do is to find some environment variables that we can use inside our Lambda function. And for that, we're just gonna have two, zone ID and zone name. This will allow us to access the zone inside our Lambda function using the SDK to both list the records and update them. The final thing we need to do after defining our Lambda function is assign the permissions we created earlier to our newly defined Lambda function. So let's do that. We should do update record lambda dot add to role policy root 53 permission. The final thing we need to do as mentioned is just to write our Lambda function. So to do that, we're gonna create a new file called resources in the root directory. And then inside that, we're gonna create our update record.ts file. Like so. And then inside here, we're gonna add in the following code. Just like so. And then we need to just install the AWS SDK client root 53 package in our terminal. Now let's just install our missing root 53 client SDK package by doing npm i at AWS SDK slash client root 53. And then you can see here, let's just import the commands that we need here. So let's just quickly run through the code that's happening here that we've written. So the first thing we do is we bring out the zone ID and zone name that we passed in in the environment when we defined the Lambda. We then run this get records function, which allows us to list all of the resources on that zone ID. We then get all of the A records from, them, from the records returned, and then we print out the A records. This is what will allow us to see the values both before updating and after updating. So after we printed out the records before doing any updates, we then configure the parameters that we need to send the change resource command. So we pass in the zone ID, an upsert with the zone name on the record, because if you remember, we created our A record with the name of the domain name, which is the zone name as well. We then pass in the new IP address that we want to give, which is .1.2 instead of .1.1. .1. 
and passing the TTL for the DNS record, as well as the type of record that it is, which is an A record. We then send that command here, and then we finally get the records again using the function that we went through earlier, just to print out any new records. And that concludes our stack. So we've now written our Lambda function, defined it, and we've configured Route 53 as well. So the last thing we need to do is just deploy and test it to make sure it all works. So to do that, head into your terminal once again and run CDK deploy. Wait for this to run through, accept any prompts that it gives, and then we will head over to the AWS dashboard afterwards to make sure everything runs as expected. So I'll see you in a second. So my CDK stack just finished deploying, so let's jump into the AWS dashboard to make sure everything's working as expected and to test it. So the first thing we want to do in the dashboard is head over to the Lambda page. And we can see here our new Lambda function. If you can't see it, make sure you are in North Virginia or US East 1. Once you're in there, we want to copy our function name because we're going to trigger it through the AWS CLI. But before we do that, let's head over to Route 53 and make sure our hosted zone is present. So in Route 53, go to Hosted Zones, and then you see here your domain.com, the name that I created. You see here a record with a value of 192.168.1.1, which is what we created earlier. So with that all verified, let's jump into our terminal and trigger our Lambda function. So to trigger it, we're gonna use the AWS CLI, and we're gonna do AWS Lambda Invoke, and then we're gonna pass in the name of our Lambda function, which is what we copied. So you'll end up with a similar command to this, but obviously with your own Lambda function name involved. Make sure you pass through region US East 1 as well, if you're not, again, defaulted to that region already. So with that, we're then gonna trigger it, and then we're just gonna remove the file that it creates. And now with that triggered, we can refresh our root 53 page, and you can see here that the value has been updated to 192.168.1.2, which is what our Lambda function was programmed to change it to. To validate this further, we can head over to CloudWatch and we can look at the logs that the Lambda function created. So head into log groups and then we're gonna to go to the DNS record that we created and then we're gonna create into the log group here. And you can see here, our A record was name your domain.com type A with 192.168.1.1 and then a couple of seconds after it became 1.2, which is what we saw in the root 53 dashboard. So now we've validated everything that works as intended. The Lambda function executes as expected and the A record in our Route 53 hosted zone gets changed as we planned. Let's now destroy our stack to make sure we don't leave any resources lingering in our AWS dashboard. So to do that, head back into your terminal and run CDK destroy. Once you get a prompt, accept the prompt. And we should receive an error message from AWS CDK in our, in our terminal here saying that it can't delete all of the resources. I'll then show you how we can get around this error message. So as mentioned, here is the error message that I was talking about when running CDK destroy and I just wanted to cover how we can resolve this error so you're not left wondering yourself. You can see here it says that the specified host zone contains non-required resource record sets and so cannot be deleted. What this is referring to is the A record that was updated. So to fix this error, head over to your Route 53 dashboard again in your AWS dashboard, head into your hosted zone, and then go to the A record that we updated earlier. And then we're just gonna manually delete this record, like so. And then with that manually de deleted, head back into your terminal and run CDK destroy again. And then once it gives you the prompt, accept the prompt. And then this should now destroy your stack with no issues and all pass without a problem. So let's just wait for that to happen. And as you can see now, um, our stack has just finished destroying successfully. So again, if you hit this error, just log into your Route 53 dashboard, delete the A record out that was updated by the SDK, and you shouldn't have any issues. So in this tutorial, we'll look at how we can use the AWS SDK and Lambda functions to dynamically update the DNS record of a Route 53 hosted zone. This might be helpful if you wanted to pair this with say something like an EC2 or ECS instance. So every time the service restarts and gets a new IP address, we can update the DNS record pointing to it so users don't experience any interruption connecting through a domain name. If you'd like to see the blog post that accompanies this video, then you can head over to my blog using the link down below in the description to read it in its entirety there. If you'd like to see the full example code for this project as well as all of my other CDK projects, then you can head over to the GitHub repo which is also linked down below in the description. So I hope you found this video helpful and until next time, thank you for watching.